Thank you, Julie, and thank you to Altman for this opportunity to, to be able to speak with you today. My name is LaTanya Lewis, and I'm the program director, the newborn screen counselor and outreach educator for the Region 6 Sickle Cell Program at Akron Children's. Um, so I'm responsible for the coordination of the program, writing the grant, just making sure our grant objectives are being met. Um, the newborn screen side, I'm responsible for counseling families when their baby is identified with a trait. And then on the outreach education side, I'm responsible for spreading the word about sickle cell trait in the community. Okay, my talk today will be about Akron Children's Hospital's response to exertional sick leave in athletes. So just a short brief summary about sickle cell disease. It's an inheritance of two abnormal genes, usually two sickle genes, meaning one parent has sickle cell trait and the other has sickle cell trait. They had a child together and their child ended up with disease. Sickle cell disease affects one in every 500 African Americans, and it is associated with numerous complications, including painful crisis, stroke, and recurrent infections. As you can tell, the normal red blood cell is nice and round, but when a person has sickle cell disease, it turns into a sickle shape, or we call it a banana shape, and it gets stuck in the vessels when trying to pass through, and that is the major pain manifestation for patients that have sickle cell disease. So I'm gonna really pinpoint a lot about sickle cell trait and how it relates to an athlete. So when you have sickle cell trait, you're just a carrier. Um, you got either a gene from mom or dad, um, one sickle hemoglobin gene and one normal gene. Sickle cell trait is usually benign under normal conditions. It affects one out of 12 African-Americans, but it not only affects African-Americans, it affects them predominantly, but it also affects Italians, Greeks, Turks, Sicilians, Arabs, and Asian Indians. So you can no longer look at a person and say, oh, you can't have sickle cell trait because it is very possible. So my focus today is about sickle cell trait as it relates to athletes. It's something called exertional sickling, okay? So during extreme exertion, and it's not been known to happen in scrimmages or in actual games, but there's lactic acid that builds up in a person's muscles and it's also called acidosis. There's a decrease in the delivery of oxygen to the muscles called hypoxia then the fluid within the red blood cells moves out so a person gets dehydrated. Acidosis, dehydration, and hypoxia causes the red blood cells containing that sickle hemoglobin to actually turn into that sickle shape and cause problems. Sickle shape um, cells create log jam in the vessels, they get stuck, and they cut off the supply to oxygen in a person's muscles. Muscles start to die or break down, also called rhabdomyolysis, causing an increase in the level of myoglobin and potassium in that person's blood. In severe cases, athletes develop renal failure, cardioarrhythmias, and sudden death. You've heard of them suddenly collapsing on the field. So the signs and symptoms of exertional sickling can be pain in the lower back, the buttocks, and the leg muscles with weakness and possible cramps. The muscles give out. Pain is not as severe as heat cramping, but it also occurs early in the season and early during a training session. Um, they can tend to have a normal body temperature, but when it's detected early that they're having an issue, they may recover quicker. And they can also sometimes talk when they collapse. So exertional sickling as it relates to the military. So CARC reported 12 cases of sudden death between 1977 and 1981 among African-American military recruits that occurred during basic training exercises. CARC also found that the risk of that sudden death was 28-fold greater in African-American recruits than it was in others compared to, the, compared to those who have sickle cell trait. But despite the above findings, the Army does not screen, but has implemented changes in hydration and rest rules. The Marines screen, but they don't alter their training. The Air Force screens and offers options to decline service. The Navy screens and identifies those with trait by a neck tag and a red belt during strenuous exercises in case they collapse, they can identify them quickly. Also, Sickle Cell Disease Advisory Committee of the NHLBI recommend that the military stop routine screening for sickle cell trait, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding that. Exertional sickling and college football. So before 2000, there were a lot of college deaths related to sickle cell trait. In 1974 in Colorado, there was an athlete who ran just 700 meters and collapsed. There in 1985, an um, athlete from Arkansas ran three quarters of a mile. As you can see in 86, there was someone from Mississippi who ran a mile, someone from Indiana who ran 1200 meters and so on. These were the activities that they were doing at the time of their collapse. Now the causes, the major causes of non-traumatic death among college athletes, number one is cardiovascular number two is heat illness, and number three, exertional sickling, and of course, four, asthma. 
But since 2000, the number one cause of non-traumatic death among college football players is the exertional sick leave. So college football deaths among athletes since 2000, according to CBS reports that exertional sickling or complication of sickle cell trait is now the leading cause. Five of the 10 deaths in division one has been attributed to this condition. And there have been seven deaths out of 19 at all divisions since 2000 due to sickle cell trait. Now, this um, slide that you see here just shows the name of the school that the athlete attended, the date of their death, the cause of their death, their age, and the notes as far as. So just a couple of them at Tennessee Tech um, in 2000, and he collapsed during um, day one of conditioning. Devon Darling was um, from Florida State in 2000. He collapsed during mat drills. Aaron Richardson from Bowling Green in 2004, he collapsed during the first 10 minutes of practice. Aaron O'Neill from Missouri in 2005, he collapsed following conditioning workout. Um, more recent, um, I'll tell you of three um, deaths related to sickle cell trait. Isaiah Lawrenson, who actually was a Miramar football player, he's 16 years old in 2012. He also uh, collapsed. He's not on the screen, but just to mention a couple more. Also, Shanice Clark, who was at the University of Pennsylvania, um, 21 years old in 2015. It was originally said that she choked on gum, but once the autopsy was performed, they found that it was sickle cell trait um, that she actually, exertional sick sickling that she collapsed from. And also in 2016, Eric Gohl, who actually is a student at Chadron State College. Um, and he was 21 years old. He actually collapsed from the same thing. So, um, you know, it's something that we really want to spread the word about and let athletes know, um, you know, what's happening and what's going on. And one of the things that we did a couple years ago with our program is we met with some of the Pee Wee coaches and we actually were able to look up five of the seven teams, we were able to look up their athletes to see if they were known to have trait, just so they can be prepared in the future. If they decide to go on to college and play, they would know their trait status. Sickle cell trait as it relates to the NFL. So um, Ryan Clark, who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2007 against the Denver Broncos, he started having really severe pain on his left side and had to be rushed off the field. Um, he suffered a splenic infarction, which is interruption of blood supply to the spleen due to his sickle cell trait and being in Denver at the high out with high altitudes. He had to have his spleen and gallbladder removed. He lost 30 pounds and was sidelined. He later went on to play with the Washington Redskins and now has a foundation um, to raise awareness about sickle cell trait and disease because of this. So the National Athletic Trainers Association in 2007 recommends screening. The College of American Pathologists recommends screenings. The NCAA since June 29, 2009 all division one, two, and three schools now screen for sickle cell trait. Um, and that's something that we really like, but they're, the only thing about this is when you get to college level, um, there's, you have a choice of what happens. So if you step on the field and you decide to play a sport, you have to know your trait status. One of the things is you have to show proof if you already have it, that you have it. You can either get tested to see, or you sign a waiver. And we really don't want people signing waivers. We really want you to find out the best way, which is to get tested, um, to know if you have sickle cell trait or not. And I will say, um, go back a second. Our physician, um, Dr. Jeffrey Hoard, was instrumental in some of these recommendations um, with the NCAA, um, trying to make sure that we get these recommendations out to athletes. So the new recommended precautions for athletes who do have sickle cell trait, um, don't use any supplements containing high amounts of protein or caffeine because they could cause dehydration already. Um, avoid the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen. Increase performance levels gradually. Cease training and restart slowly if they start to have a muscle cramp, uh, cramping or pain. Give longer breathers between drills. And also um, do not participate or be careful to participate in intensive training methods such as repeated wind sprints, intense mat drills, fast paced weightlifting, repeated timed runs, suicide sprints, and long training runs. Because if you notice on the previous slides, those were some of the things that happened to some of the athletes. And basically stay well hydrated. You know, you can drink up to one quart per hour of water or a sports drink just to keep yourself hydrated. Um, also with sickle cell trait, some of the other new things are if you have diabetes, your leg ulcers can be worse um, with people who have sickle cell trait. 
Um, also, if you were to ever have a hard blow, traumatic blow to the eye where your blood vessels are compromised, you can continuously have problems from that eye when you have sickle cell trait. No training if ill. If you were to have asthma, keep it well controlled. Stay fit in the off season. And we're making sure that we educate athletic trainers and coaches to make sure that they understand any signs and symptoms that they see, like the leg cramps or anything like that, or if an athlete is complaining about something or being, you know, if it's hard to breathe. We want to make sure that we're cognizant of the fact that they may need um, some immediate attention. Um, and again, if muscle cramping or pain or weakness or an inability to catch your breath, stop training immediately. Now, the thing about this um, that could be a good thing or a bad thing is we don't want this to interfere with college athletes trying to go to the NFL or trying to even go to college and play. And that could be really an issue, like if the college feels some kind of way about that athlete having trade and maybe sideline them. So you have a lot of people who agree with it and you have a lot of people who don't agree with it. I say whatever is safe for the athlete, you know, it's good for them to know, but maybe to have their training offered altered a little bit. So what we're doing and what we've done in the past at Akron Children's Hospital, um, we have been attending coaches seminars. Again, I mentioned working with some of the peewee programs so we can kind of catch the kids early. Um, our athletic director emails safety zone blast out to families. Um, National Athletic Training Association policy and procedures for athletic trainings being a part of that. Um, game day seminar pre-hospital providers like the EMTs and paramedics and the fire departments just understanding what's going on with exertional sickling. And of course our regular HIP Akron Children's Hospital Physician Associates emails and literature and getting the information out to everyone um, as far as what we're doing um, about sickle cell trait and exertional sickling as it relates to athletes. We've also done some grand rounds. We've co-authored some articles in the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, we've done some talking points for providers in the community. We also do community education. We will come out and speak to any group. Um, we will come out and talk about sickle cell trait, talk about sickle cell disease. Um, and we also have done news releases to 240 different media outlets um, involved with radio, TV, and with daily and weekly newspapers in Northeast Ohio. So we're trying to really have a presence in the community so people can understand about sickle cell trait and sickle cell disease and the importance of knowing your status. Um, and another thing too to note is when you have sickle cell trait, there are other traits um, that you need to look for when you have sickle cell trait. People think it's just something called sickle cell disease, but in fact, there are two other things, um, immediate things that I'll mention quickly um, that relate to that. So if you are a person who has sickle cell trait and you um, have a child with someone who has something called hemoglobin C trait, which is another type of hemoglobin that you can have, those two people together, if that person gives off their sickle cell trait and that other person gives off their hemoglobin C trait, that child could have something called hemoglobin SC disease, which is a little milder form of just regular SS disease, but it's still disease. Also, uh, the third one is something called sickle beta thalassemia disease. So if a person has sickle cell trait and they have a child with someone who has beta thalassemia trait, they have a 25% having a chance of having a child with sickle beta thalassemia disease. So not only are we spreading the word about sickle cell trait, it's those other traits also combined that could create a problem. So those are some of the things that we're trying to get out to let people know about knowing your status. Um, portions of our um, medical director, Dr. Jeffrey Hort's podcast appeared in a video produced by the NCAA for education of athletes, athletic trainers, and coaches. Um, in June 2010, we also did an article um, framing research agenda at the NIH meeting in Bethesda, Maryland. We presented to coaches and athletic trainers in Columbus, Ohio. Um, we've done various grand rounds at Akron Children's, and I've also presented this presentation at the SCDAA conference in Baltimore, Maryland. We also presented for the Foundation for Sickle Cell Disease Research Conference in Miami about this information as well. So, um, because we're right here in Akron at, the, uh, at, at this wonderful city, the University of Akron actually has been testing their athletes since 2006, um, which is good because, like I said, we really want these athletes to know their status just for, so they can plan better. Even if it comes to plan, family planning, they need to know their trait status. So, sickle cell trait in the athlete, what's next? One of the questions that a lot of people ask is, will there be athletic identifiers? For instance, how they do with the red belt or the red vest or whatever. Uh, you know, should they flag an athlete so the, the coaches will know that they have sickle cell trait? 
um, we want to write grants to support community testing. Um, right now, we don't do community testing per se. When a baby is referred to us, we see them. We will even um, test the family to see which mom or dad has the trait. But to go around and do community testing, we don't do that right now. We just suggest that people start with their primary medical doctor, maybe see if they can do the blood work. Or, but we don't turn anyone away. We will find a way to get you tested. Um, also, Akron Public Schools, um, community testing events to prepare students for college. We'd like to really get into that to get the seniors ready before they go. Because one of the issues that we found is when the, the young people go away to college, they're 18, um, they have to call back to their home state and say, hey, mom, do I have trait? Because that's one of the questions um, that the colleges are asking in order for them to play sports. So the hard part about that is you're 18 now and you're calling and the mom is calling us. Well, we have to talk to the patient. We have to talk to the patient and try to find out if that patient was um, previously when they were a baby identified with trait. So it's kind of good to know when they're, when they're in high school, juniors and seniors to really start looking into this because you don't want to have to wait or be sidelined trying to wait and see um, rather you have trait or not. So that's one of the things that we really want to do with maybe the juniors and seniors is to see if they are identified with trait and try to help them before they get to college and have to be sidelined until they find out for sure. Um, we have been getting calls from athletes who are going away to college. Um, so some of the, fir the first things that we ask them is to possibly check with their pediatrician. Now, sometimes that can be difficult because I believe sometimes the doctor's offices don't really have the newborn records when the kids are 18. Maybe they're somewhere in a cold storage. Um, but we, the state laboratory only goes back for so many years for you to be able to find out. So what we suggest is we will offer them an appointment to see our hematologist to get tested. Or there are some um, American Sickle Cell Anemia Association in Cleveland, they do community testing. But around here, there's really not a community testing. So uh, we offer them an appointment to see our hematologist to get tested to see if they have um, sickle cell trait before they go off to college. Um, so that's the one of the major things that we really want to try to focus on um, next year is trying to make sure these athletes understand their trait status. How you can help is we look for minority blood donation. Um, one of the things that our disease patients get um, are monthly blood transfusions. And I know there's a small amount of minority donors. And so we really want to try to push for minority blood donation. Also on the bone marrow registry, there's an, there could be an opportunity for a patient to have a cure. And so we need African Americans to be on the bone marrow registry. So when that time comes, we have a pool to pull from, okay? Um, also choose to know your status. Um, if, you, if you're not sure if you have sickle cell trait or not, or you wanna find out, you can contact me. I can help you try to figure out how to find out. Rather that be, depending on your age, through your pediatrician, through your birth hospital, or even by just getting you tested so you can know your trace status. And then also support us in sickle cell events in the community, including any bone marrow drives, um, American Red Cross blood drives, or through our annual Michael Clayton Sickle Cell Awareness Walk that we have annually. So that um, next year will be our 17th annual Michael Clayton Sickle Cell Awareness Walk. Unfortunately, this year due to COVID, we were not able to have the walk, but we are looking forward in hopes that we are able to have it next year. Um, and again, the big thing is just knowing your status and being able to, um, it's knowing that you, if you have a child with someone else with trait, you have a 25% chance of having a child dis with disease. And it's better for you to know your status moving forward. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Jeffrey Hort, our medical director, um, who was instrumental in this, and also Dr. Joseph Congeni, Valerie Holbrook, and Judy Griggs, and of course my Region 6 sickle cell team that consists of Dr. Prasad Bodis, who is our sickle cell medical director, Lauren Beck, who's our nurse practitioner, Joe Jellagrange, who is our social worker, and Lisa Seibotham. She is our apheresis um, and our nurse for our sickle cell program. Um, you um, here have my, the references, and then uh, this is the contact information if anyone has any questions or if you're interested in knowing your status or the status of your, your, your baby, um, I will be more than happy to help you, um, and that is my contact information on the screen.